We were headed to a fancy restaurant where we had been invited by my mother in law, Beth. When we got there, there was only one seat left. It seems like there is only one seat left, so there is no seat prepared for me? When I asked her that, she grinned and said this. This is only a family gathering, so there was no need for me to prepare a seat for you. Oh, but you'll have to pay the bill for the restaurant. Beth looked really proud of herself as she said this. But I just had enough and couldn't take it anymore. I will never pay the bill for a stranger. My name is Megan and I am a 30 year old office worker. My husband, Andrew, and I have been married for three years now. We are currently both working together and we have been supporting each other and living happily together. My husband does his share of the house chores and he also works hard at his job. I respect him and I think we have a very good relationship as husband and wife. We were happily married in that way. But there was still one problem which troubled me, and it was a big problem for me. And that problem was my mother in law, Beth. My husband has a little brother, Thomas, and Andrew was the eldest. So, that is one of the reasons why Beth loves my husband very much, as he was her eldest son. My husband tells me. My mother is too overprotective and she could be a little bit of a hassle. And it seems that he's not a mama's boy, but that Beth is the one who is overly affectionate about Andrew. Probably Beth thinks that her eldest son is the most dependable, so of course she considers me, who married him, to be her enemy. And what's even more funny is that it takes about only 20 minutes by car from my parents in law's house to our house, so we live pretty close to each other. So that's why Beth persistently calls us to visit her nonstop. Andrew basically refuses Beth, saying that we were busy. But if he doesn't show up at least once a month, Beth would storm into our house. So he has no choice but to visit her. I wouldn't really mind if Beth only bothered my husband, but she also picks on me and harasses me, which is very annoying. Oh, Megan, I made you some tea. Well, yours is the third cup which I brewed with the used tea leaves, but I'm sure that the tea would still taste fine. Oh, th thank you very much. Uh Sour. There seemed to be a lot of vinegar in the tea, so it tasted extremely sour and bad. Seeing me frowning and making faces since it was so sour, Beth was holding her stomach and laughing. <laughs> I love that face of yours. It really is worth teasing you around. And that is how Beth would suddenly pick on me in an unexpected way. And not only that, But she usually says something very abusive towards me. And the unfair thing is that Beth would never do that in front of my husband. Only when it is just the two of us, she picks on me and is mean to me. And lately, Beth has been picking on me again by asking me questions whether we are blessed with her grandchild or not. Oh, Megan, when are you going to get pregnant? Well, Andrew and I are both still working, so we're not really in a hurry about it. Besides, Andrew and I have been talking about not really planning, but waiting for an opportunity for me to get pregnant in a natural way. Well, it seems like that natural timing hasn't come at all. You are infertile, aren't you? Excuse me? Of course, you must be infertile. I really do feel sorry for Andrew for marrying a wife like you. Beth would say those horrible, abusive words to me, as if it was a normal thing to do. Why should I be the one being told this by Beth? First of all, it's not right that she sees me as her enemy just because I married her eldest son. 
And it's also not right that she is directly attacking me verbally with these terrible abusive words. I was honestly overwhelmed by Beth being like this and attacking me like this. I thought about talking to Andrew about it, but he had just been promoted at his work at the time and was quite busy with work. So, because of that, I didn't want to cause him any unnecessary troubles. I should take care of this by myself. Since thinking that, I then tried various things. I tried praising Beth, and on the contrary, I also tried arguing back to her about her bullying me. But none of them worked at all, because they only made Beth even more annoying than before. Then, I had heard that Andrew's little brother Thomas was getting married. While I congratulated Thomas and his wife-to-be about their marriage, I felt a little bad for Thomas's partner, Kimberly. I'm completely sure that Kimberly would be in trouble if she finds out that her mother-in-law was such an insane, jealous old woman. Afterwards, Thomas got married successfully to Kimberly, who is now his wife, and had a huge wedding ceremony. Kimberly was very beautiful in her wedding dress, and she actually used to be a model. She had a great shape, and seeing her in her beautiful wedding dress, I thought that she was going to be photographed for a wedding magazine. Then came the first New Year's after Thomas and Kimberly got married. At my parents-in-law's house, relatives gather for a dinner party on New Year's Eve. I was sure that Kimberly would be ordered around by Beth to help out around the dinner party. If she looks like she's having a hard time, then I should be there to support her. That's what I thought to myself, but I was surprised to see what had happened on the New Year's Eve. Oh, Kimberly! Let's have a drink over there. All right, Beth. To my surprise, Beth didn't order around Kimberly to help prepare for the dinner party at all, and just treated her nicely. Oh, Kimberly, you're a very nice and lovely girl, and I'm just so proud of you. She's so different from my eldest son's wife, who does everything wrong when I ask her to do something for me. Having Kimberly here is enough. I don't need any other wife other than her. That's what Beth would say to all our relatives. I was filled with anger and embarrassment. It seems that Beth thought that she could be the center of attention just by being with Kimberly, who was a model, and everyone would be around her. So that's why Beth seems to like Kimberly more. On the other hand, Beth would still pick on me whenever we are alone in the kitchen. You really are an inconsiderate person, aren't you? If someone has an empty glass, go pour a glass of beer right away. Compared to Kimberly, you're not beautiful, and the only thing you're good at is doing your best at house chores. You're a woman who is infertile and who can't even get pregnant. So just hurry up and do the chores. Beth treated me like that, and in this way, I saw a huge gap between how I was being treated and how Kimberly was being treated by Beth. I think it's amazing that she can change her attitude so blatantly. I tried not to provoke Beth any further and returned to the dining hall after listening to her accordingly. While I was eating at a table away from Beth, some of the relatives who were sitting nearby encouraged me. Beth is a person who would take things for advantage. I mean, she changes her attitude so blatantly. You really are having a hard time, huh? Now that Beth's in a good mood from the drinks, you should also enjoy the food and drinks while she's being like that. Thank you. Since some of the relatives are kind to me in this way, I have managed to endure the crappy treatment from Beth. But then, something unbearable happened. One day, my husband received a phone call from Beth. What? Dad's 60th birthday celebration? Mm-hmm, yes. We were planning to all get together as a family and celebrate his birthday. Of course you will come, right? Yeah, I will. Could you also ask Megan for her to come to the celebration too? 
Sure, I'll ask if she can make it or not. Beth has a really loud voice, so I could normally hear her voice from my husband's phone and I could understand what she was saying. Well, I think you heard all about it, but what do you think, Megan? Do you think you can go? Well, hmm... I thought about it. I really did not want to see Beth as much as possible. But it would create bitter feelings if I was the only one not attending Jack's 60th birthday celebration. Thomas and Kimberly would definitely be invited, and they would go, so if I don't go, then I would only be the one not attending. Well, Beth wouldn't bully me when Andrew is there with me, so I guess I'd be fine. I told Andrew that I would attend, and then the two of us went shopping for a gift to celebrate Jack's 60th birthday. About two weeks later, the day of Jack's 60th birthday celebration arrived in no time. We were told that the party would start at 6.30pm, so my husband and I went to the dinner party on time. We headed for a fancy restaurant where we had been invited by Beth. When we arrived and were shown to the private room, all the other relatives were already there. Oh, so everyone had already arrived. You're all early. My husband said that, and to that, Thomas replied, No, mother told us that today's dinner party starts at 6 p.m. What? No, it's from 6.30, right? My husband looks at me as he said that. To that, I said, Yes, Beth called me the day before yesterday about the start time and told me that it would be from 6.30 p.m. Then, to this, Beth says, I clearly said it would start from 6 p.m., didn't I? Megan, you must have misunderstood. And she began to get angry. I don't want you to talk as if it was my fault when you're the one who got it wrong. As she said that, then it hit me that I was being set up. Beth was trying to make me the bad guy to get everyone to blame me. Oh, there, there. It's not like we're going to run out of food. And now that we're all here, let's get on with it. Jack, who was the main host of the party, said so, and it was settled for the time being. My husband and I walked to the end of the dining hall where there was an empty seat. But then, I noticed something. When I got there, there was only one seat left. It can't be. It was Beth who had organized this dinner party. There was no way that Beth would not have prepared a seat for Andrew. This means that she probably did not prepare a seat for me on purpose. She probably lied to us about the starting time because she wanted to make sure we would be the last to arrive. You didn't prepare a seat for me? When I asked her that, Beth said this with a huge grin on her face. Oh, did I perhaps make a mistake? Did I miss a seat for you? I'm sorry. I thought I had enough seats for everyone, but I must have made a mistake then, hmm? Beth lied in a way that was completely easy for me to understand that it was a lie. Then, Andrew said, I'll see if I can get another seat and left the room. I felt a little awkward being in this room just standing around, so I left and waited for my husband to come back. Then, for some reason, Beth also came out of the room. Beth seemed to think that this was a good chance to be alone and bully me. Your panicking face was a masterpiece. Aren't you ashamed at all for doing this? If Jack or Andrew finds out about you bullying me like this, they would be furious with you. Excuse me? Of course they won't find out. I'm bullying you in a way that they won't ever find out about it. I see. But I really didn't think that you wouldn't prepare a seat for me here today. Because a wife is only a stranger, and because we're not even related by blood, you know? This is a family gathering, so there is no need to prepare a seat for a person like you. 
Then what about Kimberly? She's a wife too. She is special. If she's there, then everyone would also pay attention to me. I see. Well, I've had enough. Even if I could get an extra seat, I'm leaving. Well, duh, of course. Who would even allow you to attend to this party? Oh, but you will have to pay for the restaurant bill. Beth looked so proud of herself as she said that. But I have had enough, and I couldn't take it anymore. I will not obey with what Beth says anymore. Oh, do stop talking nonsense, Beth. I will never pay for someone's bill who is a stranger to me. When I said that, Beth's face turned bright red. This is not n nonsense. And also, what are you saying to your own mother in law? Oh, no, no, you said it yourself, Beth, that a wife like me is a stranger. Or do you pay for other people's meals and drinks, Beth? Well, you certainly don't look like such a saint who would even do that, though. Just shut up and pay up! How persistent are you? I'm leaving now. Oh, no, no! Are you really leaving? When I really tried to leave, Beth began to panic. What do you want? You're the one who kicked me out, you know. Well, it's m my treat for today's celebration. That's why I'm supposed to pay for this dinner party. Oh, so you mean to tell me that you showed off with this fancy restaurant with the intention of making me pay for it? Y yes, that's right. So you have no choice but to pay for it. Beth's logic completely made no sense to me. I felt ridiculous and said, I'm leaving, and headed for the exit. Beth was screaming at me. But I ignored her and left the restaurant. About five minutes later, I received a phone call from Andrew. Megan, where did you go? Mom said that you left on your own. I really can't stand it anymore. Huh? What are you talking about? You'll understand when you hear the recording I'm about to send you. I hung up the phone and sent my husband the conversation with Beth that I secretly recorded earlier. I had actually decided to handle the situation myself without consulting Andrew about it, so I made sure to start the recording app whenever I was alone with Beth. A little while after I sent the recording, Andrew sent me a message saying, Leave it to me. Since Andrew said that, I left him to it, and I went on home. Half an hour later, Andrew called me to tell me that he had kicked Beth out of the party and that I should go over to the party. So, I did as I was told, and went back to the restaurant. And when I entered the private room, Andrew, Jack, and Thomas came over and apologized to me. Oh, Megan, I am so sorry that I didn't realize that my stupid wife was doing something terrible to you. I'm really sorry about that, Megan. I should have washed Mom more carefully, too. Megan, I am so sorry for all the pain I have caused you. I should have been the one to protect you the most. I felt a little better when they all apologized to me that way. According to Andrew, he played the recording in front of everyone and began to question Beth right then and there. Since she couldn't deny it as the evidence was there, it seems that Jack became very angry at her and told Beth that he was divorcing her and kicked her out. Beth actually asked for Kimberly's help, but Kimberly cut her off saying, I don't trust you since I now know the real reason why you were so nice to me. And no one took Beth's side, and Beth screamed, Why do you believe what that woman says? And to that, Jack responded, That's enough. I can't do this anymore with you. I'm divorcing you. And kicked her out of the restaurant. With Beth gone, there was room for one more person, and I was able to attend the dinner party and we celebrated Jack's 60th birthday in peace. Jack was very pleased with the gift my husband and I picked out for him, and we had a great time. We paid half of the bill, and the other half was paid by Thomas and Kimberly. After that, Jack really had divorced Beth. Beth asked Andrew and Thomas for help, but both of them were so disappointed with their own mother that 
they ignored her. Beth, who had been a housewife all her life, now lives alone in a rundown apartment while working part time for minimum wage. Seeing Beth living her life like that, even though I knew this already, I thought to myself that I will never bully a wife ever. If I ever have children and they have a wife in the future, I will make sure that I will never be like Beth. For now, I will enjoy our peaceful married life as much as I can. It is unbelievable of Beth to try to get her own daughter in law to pay for the restaurant without preparing a seat for her. I was just really appalled at Beth's bullying and how she treated Megan. After all, that's the reason Jack divorced Beth. So, I do believe that Beth deserves what she got. I wish Megan a happy life with her wonderful husband. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.